Mark Twain said, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. And many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. Broad, wholesome, charitable views of men and things cannot be acquired by vegetating in one little corner of the earth all one's lifetime. Come travel with us as we leave our little corner to explore the world. This is Hydra, Greece. But before we get into the charms of this beautiful island, here's 60 seconds on what you need to know about Hydra. Buckle up, this will go fast. According to the official Greece tourism website, Greece has 227 inhabited islands and thousands more uninhabited. In fact, according to the World Factbook, Greece has nearly 8,500 miles of coastline and is ranked 11th in the world for its amount of coastline, putting it ahead of the UK, Italy, and Brazil. Hydra is one of the smaller islands and is just under 25 square miles in size. You might imagine that residents use ATVs or motorcycles to get around the island, but you'd be wrong. None of the roads are built to support vehicles, and that's because things with wheels that carry people are banned from the island. Idra does have a handful of small vehicles that service fire trucks and garbage trucks. Instead, they use donkeys, mules, and horses to transport people and things around the island, and of course by boat too. Idra has around 1,200 donkeys and mules, and as of the last population census, the people population was around 2,500, which means that every two people own a mule or donkey on average. Did you know mules can carry more weight than donkeys and have tougher hooves than horses, making them an ideal choice for moving goods and people around a rocky island? Plus, they only need four to five hours of sleep per night. I wish I could get away with four to five hours of sleep per night. So when you see mules, donkeys, and horses on Hydra, know that you're looking at a working tradition that literally goes back centuries. It is a lesser known island, a uh, short ferry ride, it's just a bit closer than some of the other uh, more popular islands like Mykonos, Crete, or Santorini. Speaking of Santorini, uh, we were actually going to be there right about now, but we had a little trouble with United Airlines scheduling. A couple of weeks before our trip, I happened to log on to United's website to check the seats. <laughs> So we ended up ditching the whole Santorini idea, but we were really excited about going to an island and just chilling for a few days, relaxing, just a little bit of unwinding before we did our sightseeing. So instead of Santorini, we ended up at this island, which is much closer to Athens. It's an easy ferry ride. People do it as a day trip. I have to imagine it's a long day trip and then you miss out on some of what Hydra has to offer in the early morning hours and in the evening. cars on it. Now there are a couple of garbage trucks that we've seen, but that's it. Everybody hauls around their items by donkeys or mules, and you can frequently see them down in the harbor area 
sometimes carrying tourists, but often they're carrying supplies that have just arrived on the island back to the residents' homes and stores. There are a lot of covered cafes that are down in the main harbor area, and they are probably normally filled with tourists. There are tourists down there now, there's locals down there now. Uh, they're maybe 10 to 20% occupied, so a little bit lower than normal, which gives us a unique opportunity to experience this island with very few people, and we have really enjoyed that aspect of it. Near the main town, there are a number of beaches that you can walk to. And we went to one yesterday, um, didn't film a lot of it, and there was a uh, about a two-year-old boy, completely naked, running around. We were very worried for him because... How do you put sunscreen on that? <laughs> Does it, it really get everywhere? How it, can you be sure? Yeah, that's, yeah. These are the things we wonder about when we're on vacation. So we didn't film that either. But it was a really nice walk. We recommend if you decide to walk to the nearby beaches that you walk along the shore. We did start our walk by going inland and up and over the hills. And we can attest to the fact it that bloody it is hot. extremely, extremely hot. There are a lot of narrow lanes and of course, because there's no car size roads, uh, everything is kind of cobbled together and the streets don't go straight for very long and you definitely do not have a GPS signal among all of the buildings. So not only was it really hot, but we easily walked two to three times as far as we needed to just because we kept getting turned around and we weren't quite sure where we were. Just take the shoreline path. Take the shoreline path. It might be fun to get lost uh, in a time that's not mid-June, July, or August. If you're here sometime throughout the rest of the year and it's cooler, definitely go explore the back lanes because you will enjoy seeing more of the residential side of the main city on the island of Idra. And the locals were wondering if we were lost. So that was that They was did cute. stop and ask us if we were lost. Do you need like, help? No, no, we're okay. We're okay. We made it to where we were going. It was it was fun, but it was really bloody hot. <laughs> to mention there are a few cats on this island not those cats but these cats As we mentioned earlier, a lot of people visit either as a day trip from Athens. Since we had a rental car, we took the advice of some locals and left from the small port of Matoki. Crossing here was inexpensive and easy, and what we'd recommend if you have a car. enjoyed our time on Idra. It had a relaxed vibe that made it the perfect place to recover from some jet lag. And it helped to offset a bit of anxiety that accompanied our first international trip during COVID. We'd easily recommend Idra as an alternative to some of the more popular islands if you're looking for somewhere that has hardly been changed throughout the past 200 years. Good morning. We are about to leave the island of Idra. We are heading over to the Peloponnese today and we are actually returning to a city we've been to once before. It's been a while, 15 years I think. 15 years, yeah. uh, we are headed to Nafplio and along the way we are intending to stop at some ruins called Epidavros. And then from there we'll continue on to Nafplio where we're staying for the next two nights. <laughs> 